This is a tutorial on one-to-one -one and inverse functions. The first thing that we're going to talk about in this tutorial are one-to-one -one functions. And the easiest way to illustrate a one-to-one -one function is to use mapping diagrams. Now before we can talk about one-to-one -one functions, we have to remember what a function is. A function is a relationship and it's a special type of relationship where every domain value has only one range value. So in this first mapping diagram we're shown here, this is not a function. Typically when we have a mapping diagram or an equation, we say that x is our domain values and y is our range values. Well, if this is a function, then our domain values or our x values can have only one y value equal to them or associated with them. Here, x1 is equal to either y1 or y2. So this one x value or this one domain value has more than one range value or y values. So this is not a function. In our second mapping diagram here, we do have a function. Every x value or every domain value has one y value associated with it. x1, x2, and x3 all have their own y value or one y value, but x1 and x2 in this case have the same y value associated with them. That's okay because each one only has one y value with it. It's okay that they share the same y value or the same range value, but that means that this is not a one-to-one -one function, it's just a function. A one-to-one -one function is when each x value or each domain value has its own personal y value or range value. So none of our values of x will ever equal the same value of y. So x1 is equal to y1, x2 is equal to y2, x3 is always equal to y3 and none of them share. So let's look at an example of this. Here again we have something that's not a function. y squared is equal to 2x. This is not a function. Because the value of 2, if we plug that in for x, and solve this for y, could get us the solutions of either negative 2 or positive 2. So since this 1x value has two different y values associated with this, it is not a function. Here we do have a function, it's y is equal to 2x squared, but this is not a one-to-one -one function because the values of x, 2, and negative 2 will both get the y value of 8. This is still a function because each x value only equals one y value, but again it's not a one-to-one -one function because we have two x values equaling the same y value. So lastly, here we have a one-to-one -one function. It's y is equal to 2x. If I plug in 2 for x, I get 4 for y. If I plug in negative 2 for x, I get negative 4 for y. 1 for x, I get 2 for y. This is a one-to-one -one function because every value of x that I can plug into it will get us a different single value of y. Now you may remember the vertical line test. The vertical line test tells us that if we have a graph of a relationship, whether or not that relationship is a function. So here we have two relationships and their graphs. If I draw a vertical line that intersects these graphs, and that vertical line intersects our graph in only one place, then we know that this is a function. If it intersects the graph in more than one place, then this is not a function. Well, there's a similar method for testing if a function is one-to-one, -one, and that's the horizontal line test. Here we're given the graph of two different functions, and on these graphs I'm going to draw a horizontal line. If this horizontal line intersects the graph of our function in only one place, then this is a one-to-one -one function. If it intersects the graph in more than one place, then this is not a one-to-one -one function. 
So that's how you can use the horizontal line test to determine if your function is one-to-one. -one. So now that we know what a one-to-one -one function is, let's talk about inverse functions. Now when we have the inverse function, we're saying we have the inverse of our parent function or of another function. So if we have f of x and we wanted the inverse of that function, we would be looking for the f to the negative one power of x. This is the notation for the inverse of another function or our inverse function. Now first let's talk about the inverse functions of one to one functions. Because if you have the inverse function, that means the domain of our original function is equal to the range of our inverse. And if the domain of our inverse, that's equal to the range of our original function. So if my function value has domain values of two, negative two, and one, and range values of four, negative four, and two, that would mean that my inverse function will have domain values of four, negative four, and two, and range values of two, negative two, and one. In short, if you plug in the answers to f of x, you will get the numbers that you would plug in to our inverse function. And if you plug in the answers for f of x into the inverse function, you'll get the original numbers we plugged into our original function. Now there's a special property to inverse functions. If you're given two functions and you think that they are inverses of one another, you can test this by plugging one function into the other. If you plug in the inverse of a function, infer the variable on the original function, this will always be equal to that variable. So the inverse of f of x plugged in to f of x will always simplify down to just x. This works in the other direction too. If you plug in the original function in for the variable on the inverse function, then you'll be left with just the variable. Or f of x plugged into the inverse of f of x will just get you x. So if my function f of x is equal to five x, and I think that my inverse is one fifth x, all I have to do to test this is take this one fifth x and plug it in for x in my original function. So the function of my inverse, that's equal to five times one fifth x. Now five times one fifth x, this is just equal to x. And that means that these are indeed inverses of one another. Let's say that we were given the graph of a function and we wanted to graph the inverse of that function. Well the inverse of the original function can be reflected across the line y is equal to x. Think of this y is equal to 5x plus 1 as fx is equal to 5x plus 1. Now I want to graph the inverse of that function. Well every point on this function or the inverse of this function can be reflected across this line y is equal to x and then you'll get the original function. So here our original function y is equal to 5x plus 1 has the y-intercept at one. If I reflect that across the line y is equal to x, I'll find the point one zero. That point lies on the inverse function or the graph of the inverse function. I can find another point here. Our graph passes through the point negative one, negative four. If I reflect that point across the line y is equal to x, I'll come to the point negative four, negative one. That point is also on the graph of our inverse function. So the graph of our inverse function then would look something like this. Notice that it's the same line as our original function. It's just reflected 
across the line y is equal to x. Now let's say we didn't have the graph for the mapping diagram of our original function. We were just given the equation. Here we have f of x is equal to 5x plus 1. And we wanted to find the inverse of this function. We need to find f to the minus 1 of x. Well the easiest way to do that is to take this original function here and make this y is equal to 5x plus 1. Then swap your y's and x's. Everywhere you have a y, put an x. Everywhere that you have an x, put a y. Then take this new equation here and solve it so it's y is equal to, or y is alone on one side of the equal sign. Now to do this, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. If I do that, I'll have y is equal to 1 fifth x minus 1 fifth. This is the inverse of f of x. And that's how you find the equation of your inverse function. Again, step one, write this as y is equal to 5x plus 1. Step two, swap all of your y's for x's and all of your x's for y's. And then solve this new equation in step three, so it's y is equal to, or get y alone on one side of the equal sign. Then replace your y with f to the minus one, power of x, or the symbol for the inverse function. Now up until now, we've only talked about the inverses of one-to-one -one functions. But not all functions are one-to-one. -one. Let's talk about the domain restricted inverse functions. Here we have f of x is equal to the square root of x. And then we're given the graph of the square root of x, or y is equal to the square root of x. Now if I wanted to find the graph of my inverse function, f to the minus 1 of x, I could do that. I would just take this graph of the square root of x and I would reflect it across the line y is equal to x. And that would look something like that. However, if I took the equation f of x is equal to the square root of x and I tried to find the equation of my inverse, so this becomes y is equal to the square root of x, swap my y's and x's, and then solve for y, so I'd have to square both sides, I'd end up with y is equal to x squared. So my inverse function then is x squared. However, this graph that I've reflected is not the graph of y is equal to x squared. The graph of y is equal to x squared looks like this. The graph that we've reflected is missing this second half of our original function. And that's because this is not a one-to-one -one function. Let's look at the domain of our original function, f of x. The domain of this function, well, its x has to be greater than or equal to zero. There are no negative x values because you can't take the square root of a negative number. And the range values of this function, well, there are no negative y values in the range, so y has to be greater than or equal to zero. However, if we look at the inverse function here, its domain is that x can be all real numbers. And its range value, well, there are no negative y's, so the range value is y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now remember, if we have an inverse function, then our domain has to be the same as our range in the inverse. And the range in our, 
our original function has to be the same as the domain of our inverse. But it's not in this case. Here we have x can be all real numbers and y is greater than or equal to zero. If I swap my y and x, I do not end up with the same conditions here. So if you ever find the inverse of a function, and either that function or its inverse is not a one-to-one -one function, then you have to carry along the restrictions in the domain. So the inverse of f of x is equal to the square root of x. You would say that the inverse function is equal to x squared except x has to be greater than or equal to zero because our inverse here is still restricted by the previous range values of our original function. So that's how you take the inverses of functions that are not one to one. And that completes the tutorial on one to one and inverse functions.